means if you suspend it, you can keep your delegates together once the delegates start getting assigned. And then uh, they won't drift off to Trump or somebody like that or get bribed, right? They're going to be pledged to you. As far as I know, it is still the case that the delegates assigned as a result of uh, presidential primary elections and caucuses also, they are bound to vote uh, according to the way they were chosen on the first ballot, but only on the first ballot. And after that, they can vote for whomever they wish. In other words, they will be up for grabs. They will be up for bribery and threats uh, and all the other charming ways that Republicans work out these things. Now, um, nobody, there has not been a convention that went past the first ballot in many moons. We'll try to try to work out exactly uh, how long it's been since there was a, uh, a convention that went to the second ballot. Uh, it's not even clear. It's, it goes way back. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the main thing is the political impact just of the announcement that this is going on. This is huge. It shows how weak the Republican Party is, that its uh, unity, right, its coherence is extremely fragile, and that people are in the Republican Party who really have no use for the Republican Party. Carson, Trump, they don't, they're not Republicans, really. They don't care uh, about this, uh, and, and, and well, they might not, but you get the idea. There are other people who want to have the Republican Party go on and on, like Jeb Bush, because he says, that's my family business. That's my CIA Bush faction in the, uh, in the Republican Party. Now, uh, Trump had already been asked last week, what about a contested convention? Uh, Trump says, I don't think it's going to be a brokered convention. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C. Let's talk more about this great uh, possibility which has opened up, right? We've got a clear path to the destruction of the Republicans. Uh, Trump says he does not think it will be a brokered convention. He was asked, uh, contested, but he says uh, he would uh, attempt to win that, but he would have a certain disadvantage uh, because in a contested convention, it would be Trump against the essentially the traditional Republicans of all stripes, guys who grew up with each other, who know each other intimately, and he doesn't know who they are. That's a big disadvantage. These kind of guys, these kind, um, stay close. They all know each other. They want each other to win. So you get the idea. Now, um, Trump uh, yesterday, yesterday meaning, uh, I guess, Thursday the 10th and indeed uh, on the 9th of, uh, of December, too, more or less the stuff was boiling up. Trump uh, says uh, he might have to bolt the Republican Party. He might have to quit. He might have to start a third party if he's not treated fairly. In other words, he says he's the front runner and he should enjoy the rights, privileges and prerogatives that accrue to a front runner. And he says, I'm front runner by a mile. Fine. Um, uh, they're not going to do that, I guess, uh, Donald. So what are you going to do about that yourself? Um, you can see how this uh, dynamic gets going. Now, um, Trump says he's got, what, and at this point he's got about 30 percent of the Republican Party, which means he's got 70 percent of the Republican Party against him, but the media, you wouldn't know that by watching television, would you? Um, Trump uh, always crows that he's ahead and so forth. Uh, he also says that there's a new poll which says that 68 percent of his supporters, Trump people, would bolt the party with him and help to form a third party. With this, you can already see how the Republican Party could be permanently destroyed as a national party, because the Republicans, as we've seen, they have a very, very hard time getting a majority uh, of, of the Electoral College 
to say nothing of the popular vote uh, in all these elections since, uh, you know, since uh, 2000 and, and, and years before that even, right? The whole Clinton time uh, and, and so forth, right? 92, 96, all bad news. 2000, they won the popular vote. Um, there were even questions in 2004 and then the Obama years. So the Republicans are hurting at that level. If you minus even 5% out of that, they are in uh, basically hopeless condition. But of course, the problem with Trump is, if you look at it the other way around, Trump has got 30% of uh, 25%, and then he's going to have 68% of that come with him. So he's down to, what, 6 7 8%. Um, so he, I think, uh, he is, of course, a megalomaniac. And these arguments might say, well, you know, once I get out of the Republican Party, my independent stance and my ability to fight and go all the way will electrify the universe and uh, capture the attention of everybody. So he may think that he can do it. If he does, it will be one of those examples, which we always note, when evil does good in spite of itself. When evil fights evil, attacks evil, destroys evil, this is how good has traditionally benefited. It's actually one of the main reasons we're here, one of the reasons that civilization has survived. So anyway, we've got a nice clean threat by Trump to pick up his dollies and go home and uh, uh, he would do that even with this wretched, uh, you know, bedraggled contingent of, um, you know, seven, eight, nine percent, uh, you know, on the best scenario for for Trump. But now now we have a Daniel come to judgment. We have got a statesman. We have a person of long term strategic vision, a friend of the people. <laughs> And I'm referring to Dr. Ben Carson, because Dr. Ben Carson has been he's been catapulted into interplanetary space by this Camarilla, right? This meeting of the people from Romney, the people from Jeb, the people from Rubio, right? The establishment guys. Uh, ben Carson is in high dudgeon. He's not going to allow the American people to be trampled upon. And I'm, I'm probably going to have to read most of this because it's so perfect. It actually, he's got lines in here that sound like they were lifted from things that I've written over the past, you know, couple of weeks or months and years. Uh, Dr. Ben Carson releases a statement on party boss, party boss, insider meeting reported in the Washington Post. Yesterday, I was the only one saying party boss, right on the model of Soviet party boss, Khrushchev, and that would be Reince Priebus uh, of Wisconsin. So, Alexander, Virginia, Alexandria, Virginia, December 11th. Today, Dr. Ben Carson, retired neurosurgeon and 2016 GOP presidential candidate, released the following statement. This all in quotes now. If the leaders of the Republican Party want to destroy the party, I repeat, if the leaders of the Republican Party want to destroy the party, they should continue to hold meetings like the one described in the Washington Post of this morning. This is the article that I've just uh, read to you from, right, from today's WAPO. If this was the beginning of a plan to subvert the will of the voters and replace it with the will of the political elite, I assure you that Donald Trump will not be the only one leaving the party. <laughs> I pray that the report in the Post this morning was incorrect. If it is correct, every voter who is standing for change must know they are being betrayed, and I will not stand for that. This process is the one played out by our party. If the powerful try to manipulate it, the Republican National Convention in Cleveland next summer may be the last convention. I couldn't have said this better myself. I am prepared to lose fair and square, as you will, as I am sure Donald is. Uh, he's not, actually. But I will not sit by and watch a theft. I intend on being the nominee if I am not 
the winner will have my support. If the winner isn't our nominee, then we have a massive problem. My campaign is about we the people and not they the powerful. Again, the far-seeing and enlightened statesmanship of Carson uh, is exciting. Uh, uh, voters, uh, Americans ev everywhere are focused now on this uh, absolutely great statement. If they want to destroy the party, and this will be our last convention. Uh, so this is the Carson statement. So now you can see perhaps that my um, talk over recent years about the possible destruction of the Republican Party, this is absolutely realistic. And you can see if, if, they, if they do try to exclude Trump in some way, treat him unfairly, sandbag him, whatever it is, exclude him, disadvantage him, he will go ballistic and he will walk out. If he runs and brings down the Republican Party, I guess in terms of his megalomania, that would uh, perhaps prove satisfying. I think um, Carson has a great... Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Top, the reporting from Washington, D.C., and bringing you the good news of the looming collapse and destruction of the reactionary Republican political entity. And uh, this is going to be a sight for sore eyes. you got to thank God that you got to see this. I hope it goes all the way in the next year or so, or maybe quicker. Um, remember, Trump is theoretically getting you know something like 25 percent of the Republican votes, maybe a little bit more in some of these early primary states. Uh, Carson, uh, a, a month ago, was the front runner himself. So we got the, the two people who have alternated, at least to some extent, at the top of the Republican field. We've got Carson, um, who was leading at least for a while. And then we've got Trump, who has been leading for much of the time since about May, June of, um, of earlier this year. So he says, if the leaders of the Republican Party want to destroy the party, keep doing what you're doing. And maybe this will be our last convention. And he also says that uh, Donald Trump will not be the only one leaving the party. Well, between them... This is at least half of the Republican primary voter base. Uh, it may be more. It may be 55 or 60 percent, right? The two of them were uh, close. They were somewhere between 25 and 30. Uh, you, you can check it on uh, Real Clear Politics or someplace like this. So don't take it just from me. My diagnosis of the state of the Republican Party was realistic, and we've now got no, 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 no one less than uh, Ben Carson here to tell us the story. Now, let's talk a couple of other aspects about this. Um, uh, for Trump, of course, it's the uh, illusion of fairness uh, that counts. Right? Um, it's it's a matter of prestige. We have to focus in now on um, a couple of these other Republicans when. Trump went into this raving, hysterical, xenophobic, anti-American rant. Is if you're anti-immigrant, you're anti-American, huh? There's no way out of that one. Look at the history. If you're low wage, you're anti-American. Same story. Uh, Confederate states might get by. America, no. So um, Paul Ryan, otherwise known as Blackbeard or maybe Bluebeard, uh, Blaubach Schloss is supposed to be his uh, favorite uh, listening, right? Bluebeard's Castle. Um, Blackbeard, Bluebeard, um, Paul Ryan, he's actually, I think he's inspired by the Russian anarchists of the 19th century, or maybe some of the Italian anarchists. These were all bearded. Uh, and the idea is the Republican House uh, grouping is essentially a bunch of anarchists, so maybe he's uh, he's going to show us that. Uh, what did Paul Ryan did? He said, 
what was said yesterday. Now, I, this, the parts, the clips I heard on television, 